I'm Paula with K9 Country Academy. We create videos to give you the tools and the skills to have a well-mannered dog, all while building the relationship you both deserve. In this video, we're gonna be talking about Fast Cat. It's one of those sports that is fun, fast, and a lot of people wanna get into it. But where do you get started? One of the best things about training your dog is it can do extracurricular activities like Fast Cat. Fast Cat is a 100-yard dash that your dog chases a plastic white bag, typically, on a pulley system down a big lane. And the dog is released by one person at the start and then is caught at the end. Now, your dog is timed to see how fast they can go, and that time turns into miles per hour. Now, dogs are graded based on their speed within their size and within their breed, and there's really no placements at the event itself. At the event, you'll get a qualifying ribbon or a title ribbon, depending on where you are in the sport, and that just signifies your dog was able to run and complete their run. It is timed, as I mentioned, so there's going to be actual timers at the beginning and the end. So when your dog crosses the first line, that's when your time starts. And then when they cross that last line, that's when it ends. Now, all breeds can do this. It's not just dogs who are bred through AKC breeders. It's actually appropriate for mixed breeds as well. Small to tall. What's really important to note is that your dog is physically sound to be able to handle this, so they have no physical issues, they're 12 months and older if they're participating in the actual event, and that they can handle high arousal and stress environments. So if your dog can't handle those things, this wouldn't be the best fit for you, but many dogs can. And it's really exciting for dogs to see other dogs get amped up and to run, and so you have to be able to hold on to your dog safely before it's their turn, and when it is their turn, until you're told you're allowed to let them go. In this sport, your dog is running off-leash chasing the lure. Now, as you can imagine, you do need to contain them before it's their turn, so having a slip lead or some sort of equipment that is permittable by the AKC, so read your rules. I like to use a slip lead. Some people like to use their Martingale collar or a regular collar if your dog isn't a net like mine is. And then when you get into the lane, you're gonna take off certain equipment. You are allowed to run with certain things, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But you're going to get them prepared before they launch, and then you are going to let go, and they're gonna run down the lane, off leash, to the person who's catching them. Now I do recommend having two known people, so yourself, and then someone else, a family member, friend, that is willing to either release or catch whatever is most appropriate for you and your dog. I personally prefer catching Norby, meaning leashing him up at the end, because that's when he's the most challenging to get a hold of. He's come a long way in the three years that we've been doing this sport, but at first it can be really exciting and your dog has zero recall in that moment and you have to kind of snatch him up. You can have treats so you can catch them and have them eat you know, some sausage or something in your hand while you're leashing them up, but I definitely recommend having two people and having double sets of equipment, so two slip leads, ideally, or whatever is appropriate for you, and that way both party have something to hold on to the dog. Now, it's not required that you have a second person. Um, you can ask a volunteer there, hey, would you be okay releasing or catching my dog? And the people there are so nice, they will absolutely do it, even for the most rambunctious dogs, they will help you out. So just ask if you don't have someone who can come along with and help you with your dog. Norby is 12.5 inches tall from his wither, so from his shoulders down to his tootsies, he is 12.5 inches. He's been officially measured, and if your dog hasn't been measured, you are going to need to measure them before, otherwise they may ask you at the check-in and inspection table that they need to measure them, and they use something called a wicket. So it's like a big rectangle, and they'll just see where your dog is in size. So small, medium, large. The sizing does matter when it comes to all the breeds because there's going to be some special math to determine if you get a handicap. So if your dog is 
under 12 inches, they're gonna get a handicap of two that you can multiply to add up points faster because obviously it wouldn't make sense if you need 500 points for your next title that every single dog is gonna have a more challenging time if they're tiny to get to those points versus a larger breed dog. So that means that dogs that are smaller than 12 inches get a two multiplier. Uh, Norby, because he's 12.5, just a little bit bigger than the smalls, he is getting a 1.5 multiplier and then the big kids, no multiplier, just whatever points that they have. On average, Norby runs 23 to 24 miles an hour. Think about that for a moment. That's like school zone, <laughs> right? He is a fast boy. And because he is so fast for his breed, he tends to be in the top three rankings every year that he's been running. So what they do is, and it changes, so it's just recently changed, but they used to do the top three dogs in the breed. For him, if he's in the top three each year, their, their year, not calendar year, then he gets invited to what's called an invitational. Now I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but it is fun to think about these things. And now they're inviting the top five. Now they also do this for a mixed breed, so it, you do have a possibility if you have a mixed breed dog, but it's something to look at and keep in mind. You can go look at the top breeds for Fast Cat. I'll put the link down below just so you can see what breeds are running and how fast they're running and see where your dog would be after you go to your first Fast Cat event. It's really simple to get started. Number one, you have to have a dog who is physically sound and of age. So they need to be at least 12 months of age in order to participate officially in this sport. We're going to talk about puppies and how they can get involved but you wanna make sure that all their growth plates are done growing and that they're physically okay to do this. So just because your dog's a year old doesn't mean that they're ready. Check with your veterinarian or your canine physical therapist. Yes, those exist. And make sure that they would be sound to do this. And that even for your adult mature dogs, I also recommend going ahead and asking your vet, showing them videos. Not everybody knows what Fast Cat is, hence why we're watching this video, right? And so you wanna make sure they understand the impact on the dog. You'll also need to register with the American Kennel Club. If your dog is an AKC bred dog, meaning the breeder already created you know, that profile for them, you can go ahead and complete your registration with AKC. Or if you have a mixed breed or a dog who is not AKC registered by the breeder, then you can go out to AKC and get a PAL number. This number and this registration is not just for Fast Cat. It actually allows you to do any of the AKC sports. And then it's cool because everything's in one place so you can see what titles and points and things you have. Corby gets to do swimming when it's swimming season. He bike chores, we play tug, fetch. We really keep him doing a variety of things so that his body can really handle doing Fast Cat. While it is his favorite thing, it's not his only thing. And I highly recommend, if you haven't checked out all the other things you can do with your dog when it comes to sports or physical activities, to go check those things out. There's a lot you can do with your dog. Now let's say you have a little bee puppy and they're not old enough to run the full thing. Well, there's something called bunny hops that your puppy can do and they keep it nice and light and easy. They don't let them run super far, but it lets you see if your dog's interested in it and anything you introduce in a positive way to your puppy when they're young could be something they enjoy in the future. So for that, you can sign up at the event. It's a smaller fee typically than the official registration fee, which can range anywhere from like 25 to $35. Just depends on where you're located and the club hosting the event. And they will set them somewhere, you know, lower in the track. They will do the whole hundred yards. And then they will, you know, spice them up by shaking the bag and then letting them run a little bit. Let's say you're not sure if your dog's gonna do this and you don't wanna fork over the cash in order for them to do an official run. If you're at all interested in this, maybe it's at another event and so you're like, hey, I'm just gonna go check it out. You can do what's called a fun run. So those also don't cost the full entry fee and your dog likely will get to run the whole thing, especially if they're of age and they're sound, but 
you can actually walk down the middle for a fun run to help your dog see where you're going. Some dogs get really worried about where their person is and so they either won't run or they don't actually chase the lure, they just look for the person. So you can introduce them a little bit slower by doing a fun run and those will be certain times during the day that the venue will allow you to sign up for those as well as get your dog to run those. And then if you see, hey, my dog really likes it, you could do day of entry if they have space or wait till the next event. To find the next event closest to you, these are held throughout the country of the United States. And seasonally, of course, certain areas may not have these. We don't wanna run our dogs in areas where it's super wet or you know could cause slip hazards for them or other hazards. I prefer run my dogs on grass. They've run on sand, I didn't love it. Um, so you get to decide you know, what that looks like once you find the event. You're gonna to go to the AKC's website. I've put the link down below for you. And you're gonna look for the performance events and then look up Fast Cat. And you can look up by state. So I live in Georgia, I look up Georgia. Or I might go to surrounding states. I'm kind of picky how far I'll go. But if there's something that has another event, maybe I'll do both, right? So I might do Barn Hunt and Fast Cat at the same location because it's worth it, right? It's worth the drive. But you can find that. You can even go straight there and register, likely the club when they have opened registration. You can find the club's information and then find what they call the premium. And some will require that you send it in mail and others you can do it right online. The clubs that I've seen in my area tend to do two runs a day. So you could have an AM run and a PM run. So maybe you're gonna run your dog at 11 AM, that's your time slot, and then you're gonna run at 1 PM. You wanna give your dog time to you know, get used to the environment, so don't feel like you gotta get there right at 11, get there a little bit earlier, check it all out, make sure you feel good about it. Again, this is something I'm, I'm big on safety when it comes to dog sports. It's not worth it to me to injure my dog in order to play a sport. So there are risks in them running and being fast and all that. So, you know, look at the setup. There's definitely certain clubs in my area or hosts in my area that I'm like 100% all go because they have the best setup. If it's a club you're not familiar with, I might want to go check it out or get feedback because sometimes the setups are ones that you're like, mm, I don't know if that's right for my dog. And you need to make that choice to make sure you're keeping them safe while having fun. The day of the event, you're going to want to arrive there a little bit ahead of time. So 20, 30 minutes get your bearings, and then you're gonna want to head over to the check-in table. Now, depending on how the club sets it up, you might have a check-in table and inspection completely separate, or it might be back-to-back. -back. And I'm gonna walk you through each of those steps because it's gonna be a little bit overwhelming, and if you just tell people that you're new, a lot of times they're super nice, they're just gonna help you out. So you're gonna go to check-in, you're gonna take your dog with you, and you don't need your helper at this point, you're just checking in, saying you're there, and then heading over to inspection. When you check in, you're just gonna give your name or your dog's name, whatever they ask for, they're gonna be like, yep, and they're gonna check you in for whatever time slot you have. Then you can move right on over to the inspection area, and inspection is really making sure your dog isn't lame anywhere, that they're moving easily. And then if you have a female dog, because they can't tell if they are spayed, then they will actually ask you to swipe their private area to make sure that they're not in heat. Dogs in heat are not um, eligible to get in there and run for obvious reasons, that would be a risk. So if your dog is in season, it's a no-go, um, but they will check all the dogs that are females that day, so they'll ask you to do that, they'll ask you to show them. They may in inspection if they're not sure of your dog's size, because maybe there's a, a question, uh, they will also wick at your dog, meaning they will use the measurement to see if your dog it meets that height criteria that you've said. Once you're done with inspection, you can either warm your dog up if it's almost time for you to go. So that could be running them around a bit. That could be doing some sits and downs. I'm not gonna get into a ton of detail with that because I'm not a canine physical therapist, but you can talk to yours and find out what would be appropriate for this sport because you don't want them running on cold muscles. So for me, Norby and I, we will walk. He's pretty crazy at the start, so he kind of warms his own body up by screaming and jumping around. But we will walk a bit, you know, let him pee or poop, whatever he needs to do, stretch out, you know, just do his own thing. And then I will kind of keep him active until it is time for him to run. 
When it's time for you to run, you're gonna get in line um, and you wanna make sure that you yield a lot of space to other dogs if you can, because this is a very high arousal, high adrenaline activity, and so dogs are not always in their right mind. And so I don't wanna get my little guy who's screaming up to a dog who's gonna turn around and maybe yell at him or snark at him or worse. And um, so we wanna give space and you can always ask for people to yield space. And then you're gonna mosey on in when it's your turn, they will instruct you and you're gonna get into the you know, place you're gonna release your dog. There'll be lines, they'll tell you where to go, and this is where it's really important you have the right equipment on. Your dog can run with a collar on, but not with tags. I personally prefer nothing on Norby. Uh, one, because I know he's just gonna stay in the run area because he loves that, um, but he's also microchip, so that makes me feel a little bit safer. Heaven forbid he should get out and I have him on a slip lead, so I'll remove or have my helper remove his slip lead, put it to the side, hold him, and then the person that is there in the run area for you will say, are you ready? And you'll say, yes, hopefully. Uh, and when you say ready, they will say tally ho, and they will do something like this to tell the lure operator that you're ready, and that means the lure is gonna start. So as soon as they say tally ho and that line starts moving, just let go. <laughs> because what you don't want is you're holding your dog back and the lure is too far ahead. The lure operator is going to make sure that the lure is where it needs to be to entice your dog. And they're gonna zoom on down that 100 yard dash nice and fast. And then the person who is catching, whether that's you or a friend or a volunteer, is going to, once they've past the timer, so look where that is. There's also tends to be a photographer, which is really fun to get awesome photos. You wanna stand out of their way too so you can get some nice photos and not your behind <laughs> getting a photo. But you wanna stand far enough back that your dog can kind of stop. They're not just like stopping right at the you know timer. You really want, there should be plenty of room for them to kind of drift down if you will. And then you're gonna have your leash ready. I like to put my slip lead here and then whoop, just slip them through with some good treats. I get something really good like roast beef or a breakfast sandwich and then slip them up and we walk away and we walk out and we're done until the next time. After your dog has successfully run their 100 yards, you can head on over to a table that has your qualifying information and your qualifying ribbon. Now these ribbons are simple little ribbons that are gonna have maybe handwriting on them with your um, seconds or it's going to have a nice little printout that shows you like how fast they ran, you know, miles per hour, all that good stuff in one place. And you can take those and celebrate with your dog. A lot of these venues will have cute little setups that you can take pictures with your dog. That's fun too. I like to hang my ribbons up and let, you know, the dog sit and take a quick picture so that I can commemorate the fun event together. Once the complete event has ended for the weekend or the week, depending on the venue, your information for your dog's runs will be sent over to the AKC. Now this can take several weeks or months depending on how many entries they have and what the backlog is with AKC. So you can check your own portal, I'll show you mine here, that you can see, okay, this is my information, what's been logged for my dog's runs. Um, give them time, give them you know four to eight weeks. You can check the AKC's website and they'll let you know where they are in entries, you know, uploading the tally. But give them some time, don't freak out if you don't see it, and you can check it out in your portal there. I'm gonna put on the screen here the different point levels based on how you get your first title in FastCat and then subsequent titles from there. Norby just got a new title, he got his Fast cat, F cat, <laughs> and he got a nice big ribbon. And I actually have something that has his name on it as well to add to this, because some clubs will ask you if you were expecting to complete a title at their event. And if that's the case, they will make sure that they have the ribbon ready for you, and they might even have their little extra piece to put in that has your dog's name, which is super classy. So this is a really big ribbon, this is an FCAT, so that's a pretty big accomplishment. But you may also get smaller ribbons, depending on the venue, for you know BCAT as you get more points into your different titles. I also wanna note that these ribbons are not mailed to you. You pick them up at the venue. So your qualifying ribbons, as well as your title ribbons, you just have to tell someone, hey, 
I that accomplished my title. It's not official until AKC gets it, but you definitely are going to get that ribbon and then you can hang it up in your house or however you want to display it. It's really fun. It's a nice memory. And of course, take those photos with those big, beautiful ribbons. I also want to mention how important it is to be a good sportsman when you are at these events. You know, you wanna volunteer if you can volunteer. You wanna help others out. You wanna yield space. You wanna make sure you are setting everyone up for success. We couldn't do a lot of these events if we didn't have kind people who are supporting each other in one way or another. So make sure when you're at these events that you are thanking everyone and make sure to thank everyone who are there helping, whether they're being paid or not, doesn't matter to me, because I want them to know this is so valuable for my dog to get to enjoy it. And that's what it's all about. While I love my ribbons and my titles, it's not about that. For me and for the people that we get to work with at Canine Country Academy, it's about the relationship and the fun that we get to have together. And you know, one day I won't have this wonderful dog, I will only have his ribbons and these memories. And so that's what's really important to me is that even though I'm sharing sports with you and AKC things, it's not about that. It's about the fun and the time together. If your dog has the need for speed, tell me about it. I want to hear about your adventures with your dog doing things that go fast, whether it's bike touring or fast cat or other kind of lure activities. I'd love to hear about it. So let me know in the comments down below. If your dog wants to try other sports, check out this video here about barn hunt. It's also one of Norby's favorite things.